I was born and grew up in the Pamirs. It is a mountainous place rich in musical heritage and culture. From the early childhood, I was surrounded by a soundtrack of a traditional music called Mado. Mado is usually played by two main traditional musical instruments, Rubab and Daf. Rubab is a wooden short-necked lute with six god or nylon strings. It is made from the wood of an apricot, mulberry or walnut tree. It has a circular soundboard called the head. Duff, also known as daira, is a certain type of frame drum that is widespread all over the Orient. In almost all cultural events and religious ceremonies, we have a group of older men who come together to play and sing mado. So, when I heard two young men playing this music at the University of Central Asia, I was intrigued. Normally, the mado is only played on religious occasions or funerals, and by men much older than these two students, Mirzo Nabot and Hamza. So I asked them how did they come to play this music. My name is Mirzo Nabot. I am from Badakhshan of Tajikistan, from Ishkashim district, from Wakhan Valley. When I was still in school, I was very interested in Persian and Tajik literature. After reviewing each some of the, uh, the poets of the classics, for example, the poems of Rumi, Nausiri, Khosrau, Sanoi, uh, Saadi, they were very appealing to me. I would just uh, read them, recite them by myself. Then later, when I started going to Jamaat Khanas, started attending these cultural events, I saw that people were using rubab and this daf and recited those uh, poets. Then I became even more interested. But I didn't have this uh, uh, musical instrument at home. But uh, from my mother's side, uh, her relatives, they had the instruments. Whenever I went to their house, I would just take their rubab, play with it, but I was very bad at it. I couldn't even use it properly. I couldn't even handle the rubab. Then later I came to UCA, there was a guy, he's from Shosh Khorok, from Khorok. He was playing the rubab really well. His name is Hamzan Oyeb Shoyev. He was very talented. Then I started just playing that for him. But I was, I'm not good at it still. And this is the way I play the rubab and the daf and recite the mado. I'm Hamzan Noib Shoif and as Mirzo Nabot I also started uh, my interest in, in uh, Persian literature was written by uh, a so-called poet Rumi. At the age of uh, 14 I have read his, uh, some of his book and that's how I was attracted by Persian uh, literature. After that, uh, when uh, uh, I was uh, visiting uh, my granddad, and my granddad he's, he was good in playing, he had a, a rubab which were given to him by, by his granddad, um, and he was good in playing uh, on that rub, rubab, and uh, he also taught me, taught me some tricks, but I wasn't good at that time in playing rubab. And after that, I came uh, to UCA, and the UCA as Mirzon about me, uh, met me, I have met another guy, his name is Alashay Kukambekov. He was also interested in our uh, traditional music and that's why he asked me to play, to bring uh, Rabab to our campus while he'll be bringing Duff. At the end of the semester we brought, uh, we kept our promises, I brought uh, Rabab and he brought Duff and that's how we started to learn playing uh, our traditional music together. It was very interesting to listen to Mirzo Nabot and Hamza talking about their interest in Persian literature and singing Mado. It worth to note that Tajik or Persian is not the mother tongue of the majority of Pamiris, but in a performance of Mado, long lines of Tajik and Persian poetry are sung. 
Mado is very unique as it has its own taste, rhythm, tone, and special lyrics. For me, this music always has a special effect as it calls me down, makes me think of Pamir, my culture, childhood, and family. So I asked these two young men to tell me about the role of Mado in their lives. I think the role of music in my life it is something that makes me calm and makes me think and makes me reflect. For example, just imagine you meet someone, you talk to them, then they say something and you you agree with them, you know, to such an extent that you are even yourself uh, surprised. You just say, oh, this person is just me, I am him. It is the same with me and music. Whenever I listen to, especially to Mado, I uh, listen to the lyric, I say, oh my gosh, this is what my opinion is. This is what I believe in. This is what, this is what I think is true. And that's why I just keep listening to it and I just, you know, it's, some, it's somehow talking to someone who completely agrees with you. So the main thing about my do is that it, uh, when I'm singing it, it, make me, it makes me feel confident in my life and whatever, whatever I'm doing and it, it, uh, somehow it's a reminder for me that there, everything I see in this life it is um, not as much important as it, is, it, it might seem to your eyes. And I have also heard that there is also saying that a Pamir and guy, that he shouldn't fall in depression and the main thing about it is that because I think he, we are listening a lot to Mado and this Mado is, keeps us out of depression and that's the main reason I'm listening to Mado and singing it. And singing it. I think by this I'll, I'm helping people to get out of depression and it, 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 it also helps me to live my life happily. Traditionally, Mado is recited during funerals, religious and cultural events, and also on Fridays when people gather in Jamaat Khanas for praying. So it was interesting to know how often and in which occasions Mizonabod and Hamza here at the university come together to sing Mado. So, for it you say, we usually, uh, whenever, oh, usually over the weekends, sometimes uh, in Fridays, uh, we don't, get, not a lot of people gather, because not a lot of people are interested in it. We just uh, <coughs> come, uh, me and my friend Hamza, who is a very talented player, he's really good at it, because his ancestors, they were also good at it, he has learned it from his grandfather, he was a very nice man. He was amazing. He used to play the, both the uh, instrument and he, he, uh, he uh, knew a lot of uh, mados by heart. So he's really good at it. We usually go to his room and we play there. In context of UC and, and our life, we are singing it uh, again during some special events. For example, uh, recently there was a, a, a special day. We call it Shabila Yatul Qadr. And Together we gathered, gathered there and uh, performed some Mado. Mado literally means praise. In many cases, Mado Khoni, the singing of Mado, is considered as a devotional practice. Mizona Bod and Hamza share their opinions on what is the main idea behind a Mado and some legendary stories that they heard from their granddads. The main idea behind Mado is that our values, our beliefs and everything is preserved in it. For example, uh, for example from the very early times, uh, our ph the philosophy of our faith and of our tradition, it was mainly developed in the Persian-speaking territories of Khorasan. But when it came to our place, uh, usually those who brought it to our place, they were poems and they were philosophers, and they somehow uh, put every belief and every uh, value into a good structure, which, uh, which they wrote, and later people just recited whatever they said. This way it was kept for us. So for us it is mainly uh, our belief, our values and everything that we have, that we believe that this is how we should live our life and this is what are the values we should live by. So I'll basically tell you a legend behind the music of Maddo that is uh, mainly refers to our faith and uh, as I have heard from my granddad uh, he was telling me that there was um, at the beginning when 
uh, uh, Allah made our uh, body from I I don't know from ground or something like that, and then He asked the soul to get into the body, but the uh, soul it refused to get into the body. He said that this thing is dirty, I'm dirty. I'm not going to get in in there. And then the instrument, the sound of instrument, the rabab and duff. Uh, were, uh, had risen, someone played, someone played on those instruments and uh, the soul, I mean, it, it uh, like we can say, it got, it got drunk it, uh, and he, it, it forget, forgot about everything and it got into, into the body. And uh, the same thing again when we, during our funerals uh, we are uh, again singing Mado to thank the soul that at that time he got into our body and now we are say, like we can say that we are saying goodbye to him and we are thanking him that he at that time he got into our body and that's the main reason why the main idea about music of maddo most of the time maddos are recited during the funerals and they are more expressive of the grieving and telling the story about the reality of coming to this world and living it by listening to Mado, family of the deceased ones relate to the lyrics and this way they don't go into deep depression. However, there are Mados that are performed in different cultural events and they hold different meanings. So I asked Mirzona Bot and Hamza how they select the Mado they want to sing. It depends on your personal taste for Mado. If, you, for example, you find some Mado so encouraging, they give you some kind of hope, some kind of encouragement, some kind of hope for, for life. Uh, depending on my mood, I listen to uh, different of them. For example, the, the ones which are more about storytelling, uh, storytelling of, uh, of some prophet, of uh, the imams, uh, or some you know, event, I usually listen to them more. Because it is telling the story and in such a beautiful way, it, it just in, both encouraging, you learn the history from it, and you just enjoy it. But uh, also the selection of Mado, especially for us, it depends who is the audience. For example, it is somehow not, uh, not so appropriate to, for example, if the, in the audience there are people who don't come from the same background as we do, we usually uh, try to recite something general. For example, if we see in the audience there are some people who are not even Muslim, we would not just uh, start, you know, uh, reciting something which is so uh, eccentric to Islam. We would just uh, recite something which is more uh, eccentric to overall message. And if it, there is someone from our community, we will make it more specific, something that all can relate to, so that it's not that we are enjoying it and the rest are somehow feeling that something is being imposed on them, they are depressed. We don't want this to happen. So the second Mado that we recited, it is uh, it, it was also in Persian. It's called Itlijoba Khuda, which means uh, like uh, begging from God or somehow, you know, asking from something to God. It is basically a kind of prayer. It is like kind of expressing yourself to God. The way it goes, it's like uh, asking from God that uh, don't let us just wander around this world and not to do anything, not to accomplish something that really matters. And then it is asking from God that whatever we do, uh, whatever good deed that we do, just uh, accept them and uh, let us do more of those things uh, and uh, things like uh, it is also, it is, uh, the prayer goes the way that the author is becoming very uh, expressive 
uh, the author is saying whatever is uh, in his mind. For example, in one of the lines, the author is saying that uh, uh, make me sick and give me the uh, the remedy for that sickness. It's like uh, uh, keep uh, keep always myself uh, close to you, say, because unless you don't get sick, you don't look for remedy. It is the, <laughs> the same way it goes uh, in this um, uh, spiritual way. And then, uh, for example, it is said that, for example, uh, we, we don't, uh, like, what is the truth? It is somehow subjective. It is different for, for different people. And it is not something absolute. Then it is, give, uh, it is asking from God that give us tawfiq. Tawfiq, it is like uh, the, <laughs> the will. It is like uh, giving us the, uh, the, the chance of being the master of our own destiny. We are, giving, uh, we are asking from God that as this ability is given to us, now give us tawfiq so that we can use it. Uh, I would uh, put it into English, I would simply put it that give us the, uh, uh, the willingness to become responsible for our own actions. While listening to Mirzonabod and Hamza singing Mado, from their face expression and body language, I could see how passionate these two young men about singing Mado and delivering the important message through the Mado poetries. I was wondering if singing Mado somehow helps these two young men to improve and strengthen their faith or belief in religion. Basically, if you see all the, the lyrics that we recite during Mado, they come from this Persian literature. Most of them, they are not uh, focused on some specific religion or specific uh, uh, sect or specific, uh, you know, people. They have this some kind of uh, universal messages. So it's not a lot about, for example, you, uh, your faith becoming strong in a specific religion or in a specific sect. The way we understand religion now, it is somehow has been very institutionalized, uh, you know, and there are different religions, but it is somehow uniting all the religions, all the values. Whether you are Muslim or Christian or Jewish or whatever, and you are not influenced by political events or political thoughts or opinions, whatever faith you belong to, if you listen to them, they will somehow <coughs> remind you of some spe of some set of values, not of some specific religion or specific set or specific culture. So it somehow uh, strengthens your faith in humanity and unites you with, uh, with all other people. We need to preserve this thing because it made those great uh, ancestors that we had, this is something that made them that great, that nice. If we let some other people, some intruders, to take it and to politicize it, it will become weaponized and may, be, may even become a source of misery. That's why I just decided that uh, <coughs> what uh, what I can do just maybe you know memorize some of those and just to recite them to my children to my grandchildren so that they know what our what really our traditions and our cultures and our belief used to be.